name is Wade Harley. I am the director of the Maryland uh, Energy Innovation Accelerator. We are the economic development arm of the Maryland Clean Energy Center. Um, and we, our offices are in College Park, but we work throughout the state and including the Baltimore region. Um, MIA has three entry points and it's our pre-accelerator, launch pad and accelerator. And the ultimate goal at MIA is for people who have invented uh, a product around greenhouse gas reduction, energy, energy storage, energy efficiency, uh, anything in, in kind of the, the clean climate tech. Uh, if, you've, if you have that invention, uh, we help you develop the executive teams. Most inventors want to stay the uh, chief technical officer for a company and don't necessarily want to be a CEO or a COO, but starting a company, forming a company, getting through all that, that's what we refer to as the first valley of death. And so we have three entry points into MIA to help you build these entrepreneurial teams. The pre-accelerator is uh, where, that's where it's just a concept, it's TRL one, one to three. <laughs> and we're literally just working on, on the concept and we bring in an energy executive in residence, we call it an EEIR. We bring them in a thousand dollars and we take the idea uh, out to the community and to see is there a market for the product and should you proceed into building a prototype and so it's a one month program we give you a thousand dollars and again we're just trying to see is there a market for the product and to make that decision to build a prototype launchpad is the middle program but it's also our workhorse program that's where a professor has or somebody in the garage it doesn't matter uh, but we generally work with the universities uh, but if you have an invention and it, it's operating outside of the lab, outside of your garage, in in in, an, in a non-controlled environment, if you've gotten that far, Launchpad is where we really start to decide if we should start a company. And we Mia spends most of its time recruiting people who have had ten years of experience in the uh, in the field, uh, who have, who have helped bring a product to commercialization. And we bring them in for a tryout. Uh, so the contract is between Mia and the energy executive in residence. Uh, it's um, and so so it's a three to four month tryout. And we have two uh, products that have to be produced for Mia: the business model canvas, which is a lot like a business plan, but more in a uh, placemat kind of a, a more of a visual business plan, and then also a pitch deck, so that you have the ability. To, uh, to raise capital, be it uh, debt finance or, or equity investment in your company. But those are the two deliverables at MIA. And again, the energy executive, uh, we hope, wants to take on the role of COO or CEO in the company. They want a long-term relationship uh, with the company, but the contract is with MIA, not with the inventor. So there is, there is no obligation by the inventor. But after three to four months, we hope the outcome is a tough conversation about how to stay on with the company, how to get paid, those kinds of things. But you know, but we want to have a company that's in good standing with the state of Maryland, that has your, you know, the federal EIN number, all those things, the accounting, those kinds of things in, in place. The last program is accelerator, and we're up to TRL four through six in the accelerator. This is a company that has a product. Uh, has a CEO and is functioning and has sales in the marketplace, but they're have they're struggling with one component. Uh, a classic example is um, a company out of uh, College Park that had invented a new uh, a new concept on the bus shelter, and they were having trouble with the circuit board that operated this new bus sh shelter because it was but uh, it had uh, solar on the roof. It has uh, plants and a water system so that the, the, you would have more shade than just the, the normal bus stop. And so you could also plug in your, your phone, you could plug in your wheelchair, whatever it would be, but it was sort of a resiliency play on the bus stop. But again, they had problems with the circuit board. So we recruited a, a person who could organize and design a new circuit board for, for this company. And so Accelerator is for a company that already exists, but has one technical issue. And so that's, those are the three entry points into MIA. So how have we done so far? Are, are, we started in 2019 
uh, we've worked, we've assisted 112 companies. Out of those, 27 new companies have formed, uh, 61 jobs have been created, and our companies have received over 37 million in federal grants and 19.9 million in equity uh, since our inception. So that's about a 28 uh, times return on investment from the state of Maryland. And as you, if you look at the numbers, the, um, the job creation is really starting to take off. That's one of the problems we have in clean climate tech is job growth is, is not as fast as you would think. Uh, we're building gadgets, we're building items. Uh, so it's not necessarily like bio and it's certainly not like uh, software. Um, so it's, it takes a little bit longer, but we are finally starting to see the job growth in those kinds of things. And our hope is to someday in like seven years to rival bio in the state of Maryland. Um, here are some of our current teams at MIA today. Uh, we have several that are doing carbon sequestration. We, are, we have several that are doing new ideas around batteries, especially solid state batteries. We have one company that is working on nuclear fusion or fission, uh, not fusion, but fission, where the idea with the, uh, where it operates nu nu nuclear power, much more like the, how the sun operates. Uh, and then we have a simple um, company that is, you know, burying uh, logs that are at Camp Small uh, north of Baltimore that are just deteriorating and releasing greenhouse gas. They are able to bury those logs in a controlled environment in a wood vault. Um, but that, as simple as the technology sounds, uh, just using you know backhoes uh, and clay in, you know, in the right environment, uh, those are long-term carbon sequestration opportunities and eligible for long-term carbon credits. We have companies that are you know inventing new forms of plasma that can be used in um, in, in space space travel and in in turbines and, and power plants. And so it's it's across the board, and some of them again are inventors out of uh, out of out of out of the garage. Some you know most are out of either Johns Hopkins University of Bal University of Maryland Baltimore County or College Park. Uh, those are our tier one research universities, and so you would think that most of those companies would come from there. Uh, but you know they but they come from everywhere. Uh, we just have a um, um, aquatic circle is out of Cumberland, Maryland, and working out of Frostburg State. And hopefully we'll have a, uh, we're talking with someone uh, to come in from uh, Coppin State um, with a, a, a new idea on, um, on, on, a, on a part inside the batteries that people use today. So it's across the board what we work on. Um, and so then I just want to finish on where Mia is headed. As I discussed, Mia has three entry points, uh, you know, pre-prototype, uh, pre-company, and then post-company. Um, and those are not going to change. But what we are proposing, and there's a bill in the legislature right now, we just had a hearing uh, this last week and this week, this week was the Senate. We are going to, uh, if we are successful, we in the state invests the money, we are going to create a prototype accelerator so that when you finish the pre-accelerator program, and if the market says, yes, you should build a prototype, we're gonna bring on executive talent who have, have produced prototypes and helped in the commercialization part. And then also when you when you graduate from our launch pad, if you are ready to start a manufacturing facility in Maryland, we will have a uh, manufacturing accelerator at MIA. And so those will be phase two. So you get to go through the MIA program through a phase two. And then phase three is going to be our founders fund and our uh, incubator partnership. And what we're doing there is uh, the Maryland Clean Energy Center, which is, again, our parent company, will have a fund uh, where we call it the founders fund. And where um, companies that have gone through MIA that have friends, families, whoever investing in their company, we can match up to $100,000 uh, private investment in these companies. And it's especially helpful. Our companies receive a lot of non-dilutive funding from the federal government, being it DOE, DOD, uh, HUD, uh, you name it. Uh, if you, when you receive those federal grants uh, to de-risk your product, there's also limitations on what you can use. And so the Founders Fund is an idea where we can supplement with private equity uh, what what the company's able to do. And so that's what the Founders Fund is for. The incubator partnership, 
we so we are a very again we're a very expensive group uh we're building things and so we need the wet lab like bio needs it but we also need dry assembly we need fabrication we need we just need and so when we when our companies leave college park when we leave cop and when we leave uh uh johns hopkins our rent ex expenses are very, you know, our tenant finish in a rent rental situation is very expensive. And so we want to use this, uh, the, the incubator partnership fund to drive down those costs, it, be it Mia investing in equipment, uh, Mia possibly guaranteeing the last two years of a lease. Because again, when you receive a, a grant from the federal government, those are usually three-year grants, but a landlord's going to want a five-year lease. And so those last two years, there's a little bit of risk. And we're thinking that Mia could possibly help with the risk side of that. So that's the legislation. And then the final part of that is more in innovative seed grants into MEI squared, which is part of the University of Maryland system. Although they can uh, do seed grants for, um, for anybody who has an invention around clean climate tech uh, in any institution. And so uh, right now they are oversubscribed they have more good applications than they have money. So if this legislation, which is HB 1220 and SB 960, if it were to pass, we would have an extra million dollars going into the uh, Maryland Energy Innovation Institute, which we refer to as MEI squared. So that's kind of where we're headed. Uh, this afternoon, I am headed to North Baltimore to look at a facility that one of our uh, companies, J&J &J Materials, is looking to move into. And um, and so we're excited about, you know, operating throughout the state and bringing manufacturing in the clean tech environment to the state of Maryland and to uh, Baltimore in particular. And so that's my presentation for today. Perfect, perfect. Uh, thank you so much. Do you have a few seconds for a couple of questions? Sure, absolutely. All right, great. So um, <laughs> sounds like you, you get a lot of innovative ideas across your desk. Um, so I guess one of my questions is, you mentioned um, some partnerships with Coppin. Um, what would you say is your biggest uh, barrier to getting more HBCUs involved with the ecosystem? I wouldn't say it's a barrier. I think it's just been a lot. Well, I get, if you see a lack of time as a barrier, but with this investment from the state, uh, we're gonna increase our outreach. Um, the, uh, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore has an architecture and construction curriculum. And so when we have companies that are in the, um, bringing clean climate tech to building materials, we, we reach out to Eastern Shore a lot. Um, and, uh, and then Bowie, we, we've had excellent uh, interns from Bowie because our office is right down the street. And we're trying to, we have one company that is doing manufacturing in Beltsville. They need, uh, students who have some technical expertise in the HVAC field. Uh, and what we're finding is that the solar uh, curriculum has those students at Bowie State. And so we've done a lot of outreach there and we just got to get better at it. Uh, quite frankly, it's not anything the HBCUs are, are doing. Um, we, we just haven't, we, again, we've only been around for three years and, but we're starting to make inroads. And, and again, uh, we've, Almost had a company come from Morgan State uh, join us. Uh, they're still looking at it, a bit, or an inventor from Morgan State uh, in biofuels. Uh, but there's a professor at Coppin we're talking to actively, and hopefully he'll be there with me this afternoon in North Baltimore uh, for J and J Materials. But there, he he has a, I believe it is an invention around the membrane within the battery. And so it will be a, uh, I, he's not going to create a new battery, but a better item in the supply chain for battery manufacturers. And from Baltimore to College Park, we have a huge battery cluster um, for economic development. And, and Mia's goal is to grow that. Awesome. Awesome. Last question. Our audience often loves to hear about kind of lessons learned. So uh, talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, you started three years ago versus where you are today. What would you say is the biggest lesson learned with dealing with entrepreneurs and academia? Well, I, what I wouldn't know to say it's, a, I guess the lesson that I've learned is that if you, if you have very little money in any 
uh, organization kind of, um, you know, as far as investing in startups and things like that, investing in executive teams is the right place. And I am a firm believer that MIA should be replicated. MIA should be replicated at Michigan State, at Texas A&M, you know, all the, uh, you know, really science-based, you know, engineering kind of schools. Uh, it should be replicated. It also should be replicated uh, outside of uh, clean climate tech, I believe. Uh, you know, it, when you have uh, bio, uh, computer science, all those different, I, I think if students are able to, and, and graduate students and professors are, are creating products in, or ideas or inventions inside the university system throughout our state, uh, a MIA type organization uh, is the, it, is, it's the path across what we call the first valley of death, which is the formation of a company. And I think that's very important. And then there's a, a, also a, a company called Early Charm in Baltimore. They only want to deal with the leasing of IP or the, you know, the, the purchasing of I, IP. They don't want to create companies. And so, you know, for a while we thought people would always tell me Early Charm was a competitor. They're not a competitor. They're, they're a supplement. They, they are interested in other items or other business models than Mia is. B Mia wants the professors to start a business. And then the other thing I guess I've learned is that the um, the university system, the way things are set up, everybody is aligned. Everybody wants the same thing. The professors want prestige from the invention. They would like to make money on the invention and they want to invent version two. And they wanna stay in that academic environment. When you get into the federal labs, in, in places like that, they are, people are not aligned the same way as they are in the university system. There's not a, not a prestige. There's not a ability to make money. Working with the federal labs is very difficult. And I, I've tried, I have worked at it, but you know, the, 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 the offices, you know, to help uh, the professors at the universities, everybody's aligned, you know, to get that invention out. In the federal labs, it's just not that way. And I don't know how you fix it, but I've had people ask me, you know, they want to create a MIA type organization to work with the federal labs. And I'm like, you're going to pound your head against a wall. And, you know, it's just not, it's not an easy place to do because it's not as lined. I, my, so my suggestion is, is inside the university system. It's like when we were younger, it was publish or perish. Now the prestige is inventions and patents and getting those out of the universities and, and commercialized. You get the same amount of prestige for a university. And you know the state of Maryland is uh, only behind uh, MIT as far as clean climate uh, inventions and patents. So we, we're, we're off to the races and um, we just wanna keep continue to grow it. Awesome, awesome. Big shouts out to uh, Ken Malone at, at Early Charm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, here in Baltimore for sure. Um, but definitely, thank you so much for your time, your your thought leadership, subject matter expertise. Uh, it's really needed for, for what we're doing here at Baltimore Climate Tech 2024. So I appreciate it. No, no problem at all. And if I if I can do anything else, just let me know. Appreciate it. All right, have a good one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye -bye.